there's something else that gets entangled in the process. So the new capitalist, right, the industrial capitalist or the uh, agricultural capitalist or the services capitalist, you know, the modern capitalist basically, what the modern capitalist does is something different. He or she uh, engages in the activity of buying raw materials, constructing factories, buying technology, but also hires workers, you know, to work on these technologies and these machines and so forth, and uh, produces new commodities. So there is a, a new domain that gets added on, right, in modern capital. What's the new domain? It's the domain of production, right? So capital now takes over the domain of production. Money lending capital and merchant capital did not interfere with the domain of production. Production happened elsewhere. They didn't care how production happened. It could happen in a peasant economy. It could happen in an artisanal economy. It could happen in a slave economy. All these happened, right? Uh, American economy grew through slave production, right? American capitalism is based on slavery in the southern parts of America, of course, also in the north until 19th century. So what you see is uh, what Marx is saying is modern capitalism incorporates, embeds the domain of production within the circuit of capital, right? So these are the three forms of capital. Uh, if you go to any society, these are the three forms of capital, right? You go to ancient societies, you see modern societies, these are the three forms of capital, right? You, you, there are no other forms of capital. And then he asks the interesting question. So how does the self-expansion of capital happen? Right? This is the key point. This is the second point and the key point I want to make. And uh, uh, there he discovers something very interesting. So how does the self-expansion uh, of capital happen? <coughs> how does money become capital? There he says, in modern capitalism, capital is not simply one aspect of capital is self-expansion of value. But there's a whole other aspect to capital, which is that it is a social relation. Capital is a social relation. It's not merely self-expanding value. It's a social relation. So what's the meaning of that? What, what do we mean by the statement that capital is a social relation? What it means is the following. Capital in the domain of production has now developed a a new relationship with what is not capital, its own antithesis. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I, I'm sure some of, most of you are familiar with dialectics, thesis, antithesis, and so forth. Uh, so capital incorporates into the domain of production its own antithesis, which is wage labor. Right? And uh, I will talk about, you know, how wage labor comes into existence towards the end. I'm just following Marx's sequence. When I teach, when I taught this course in HCU, I used to uh, uh, talk about how wage labor emerges as at the very beginning of the course. But, uh, you know, I'm following Marx's sequence deliberately, respecting the crafting that he did, enormous crafting that went into this text. Right? So, so he says capital is a social relation now, and uh, the capitalist, right, hires the anti-capital, which is wage labor. He puts them in some form of synthesis and produces new commodities, right? So capital is a social relation in the sense that uh, it, it's a product, the self-expansion is a product of the thesis and antithesis coming together, capital and wage labor coming together, right? When you put them together, you get the self-expansion. That's what Marx is saying. That still doesn't answer. How do you, you know, when you put these two together, how does self-expansion happen? It's not uh, obvious why, you know, capital and wage labor, when they come together, uh, you know, self-expansion ought to happen. So he returns to the world of, uh, you know, commodities. And he says, let us accept the claims of capitalism at their face value. What is the claim of capitalism? Markets have equal exchange. Equal exchange is for equal. Right? Uh, the, the, my pen, let's say, uh, is uh, 100 rupees. And uh, let's say, you know, there is uh, another uh, commodity that you can buy for 200 rupees. So for the 200 rupees commodity, you, uh, using that, you can buy two pens. Right? Through the equivalent of money, of course. So 
what Marx is saying is equal exchanges for equal. Let's accept capitalism uh, at its face value and say that markets, you know, have this uh, aspect of equality, equal exchange in the domain of exchange. Suppose we accept it, markets uh, uh, facilitate equal exchange. The next question becomes, so how does, you know, self-expansion occur? The capitalist starts with, let's say, uh, you know, 1,000 rupees at the beginning of the production cycle, but ends with 1,100 rupees, let's say. So how does this more value get created? This extra 100 rupees get created. Right? How does this uh, uh, self-expansion of capital occur? 1,000 rupees has become 1,100 rupees. Right? And Marx is saying it's a social relation. How does the social relation facilitate when you have exchange of equivalents, right, in the domain of exchange or in the domain of markets? So this is where he says, no political economist has ventured out into the space that I am going to venture out into now. This is Marx's words. And uh, he says, there, are, there is a hidden abode of production, right, that other political economists only barely touched including Smith and Ricardo, and I'm going to go into that abode of production and find out the secrets of, you know, how this self-expansion occurs, right? And he says, typically, that domain is something that people are not allowed into so easily. So admittance is only on business. That's what he used. This is the particular expression he uses in capital, of course, in the translated version. Admittance is only on business, and I'm going to go in and look at what happens in this hidden abode of production. We set up this puzzle, you know, everything exchanges equivalently, how does more value result? Right, if you look at the circuit of capital, M leads to C, which is, you know, buying of raw materials, technologies, and labor power, and, uh, you know, uh, uh, a new commodity is produced, and the, uh, uh, the, when money is converted into raw materials and labor power, an, an exchange of equivalent suckers, and when a new commodity is produced, it's sold in the market, equal value is uh, produced, uh, equal value is exchanged in the market. So how, where is this more value coming from? And uh, there he goes into the domain of production. And he says, there's something very fundamental uh, that goes on here. He says, you know, every commodity, what is the value of a particular commodity? The value of a commodity is the socially embodied, uh, uh, you know, uh, labor time uh, that goes into that commodity. Socially necessary abstract labor time is, is the expression that Marx uses. So every commodity uh, is nothing but the socially necessary abstract labor time, right, that goes into the embodiment of that commodity. Similarly, <coughs> when a worker goes and uh, sells the commodity that uh, he or she has in the market, what is he selling? What is the laborer selling? Laborer is selling 